What's up guys, Chigs there from Chigs Tech Reviews. So it's finally happened people. Mikul has released a TV box with official certified Google Android TV OS version 10 with licensed Netflix HD certification. So this is the Mikul KM2 and inside the box you will find a user manual, an HDMI cable, a power supply, a small remote control finished in white and you'll notice that we do have a Netflix button on the remote control and it is powered by two AAA batteries. And last but not least, the TV box itself. So the Mikul KM2 is priced around $75 or £51 in the UK and it is powered by the S905X2 quad-core CPU along with the Mali G31. You've got 2 gigs of LPDDR3 RAM, 8 gigs of internal storage, dual band Wi-Fi AC with dual antennas, you've got Bluetooth 4.2, you've got an Ethernet port, official Android TV OS version 10, along with Google Assistant and Chromecast built in. This supports HDMI version 2.1 with 4K HDR at 60 frames per second, supports HDR10+, and this also supports Dolby Digital, Digital Plus, and your usual 5.1 surround sound, and this comes with a Bluetooth remote control. Now let's take a closer look at the box itself. It's made from plastic with a matte white finish. You've got these nice rounded corners with the Miku logo on the top. So minimalistic, but still very nicely designed. Now on the front, you have some LED indicators for power connections, etc. On the side, you have a micro SD card slot, USB 3 and USB 2. On the back, you have a physical power button, a power socket, your ethernet port, HDMI out, AV port, SBDIF audio, and an IR port. If we keep going, there is nothing on this side, and that brings us back to the front of the box. And here is a quick look at the bottom of the box. So without any further ado, let's get this box all connected up and find out exactly what it's capable of. I'll be right back. So first of all, I ran a boot up speed test, and this TV box took 34 seconds to fully load the home screen from a cold start. And this is of course Google's Android TV OS version 10 with everything conveniently placed on one page for a user friendly experience. And you can also fully customize what is shown on the home screen. Now, first of all, if we head over to the main system settings and go to device preferences and check out the system storage info, you will see that this box has eight gigs of internal storage from which you have 4.5 gigs free to use. Now, if we have a quick look in about, you will see that this box is running Android TVOS version 10. Now, this box is running official licensed ATV, which means we should have a fully working Chromecast built in. So I'm going to grab my phone and try casting a video directly from YouTube. And as you can see, the video is playing fine. So Chromecast is working great. Now let's check out the complete system apps. Here are all the apps available on this box as standard. I've actually only installed two apps, the Disney and the Smart IPTV app. Everything else came pre-installed. And you also have access to the Google Play Store, but it's not the full version, it's the Android TV version. So all the apps are optimized to run specifically on Android TV. So now it's time to play some 4K video samples from USB drive and I will be doing this from the included movie player app. So let's begin with the usual high bitrate jellyfish demo. So the first jellyfish video 160 megabytes per second is playing smooth with no issues. But thereafter I tested the 180 megabytes per second file and that one stuttered and did not play as smooth. Now on to some 4K 60 with HDR. So as you can see, 4K60 playing absolutely fine, nice and smooth. I also tried two Dolby Vision clips to see if they would work. Atmos got picked up, but the video colors were green. So Dolby Vision not supported. All right, so that was 4K from USB. And now we're gonna move on to some 4K YouTube. So my first clip, 4K60 streamed okay. The stats do show some frame drops, although not noticeable while streaming. Now this happens only when streaming at 4K60. However, streaming in 4K30 is super smooth with no issues at all. If we're not real, doesn't that mean that nothing you do matters? I am sitting here with my best friend. 
So that brings us to the Netflix test and I am pleased to say that Netflix 4K HDR 60fps is supported on this box. Legit. And you're also getting support for Dolby Atmos. Now Dolby Vision is not supported, but it's nice to see 4K HDR with Dolby Atmos. That is incredible. And likewise, Amazon Prime Video will also give you 4K HDR with Dolby Atmos sound. Disney Plus completes the hat trick, giving you 4K HDR 10 with 5.1 sound. So that's 4K streaming across the board, people. All right, quick gaming test playing Asphalt 8 with the GameSir G4S controller. And as you can see, super smooth gameplay and graphics. So a decent gaming performance from that Mali G3 One. So Asphalt 8 is a big game, no doubt, and after installing it, you can see 1.8 gigs free to use. But on a plus side, you can expand the internal storage with a very convenient microSD card. And a very quick test of the voice remote control, so press the Google Assistant button once, let go, no need to keep it pressed. Download file manager. And it does a good job at picking up your voice, and the voice feature works extremely well. Furthermore, you can sideload all your favorite APKs directly from a USB drive. Now, I did have some issues installing Antutu to benchmark tests, but everything else I needed installed fine. So, for you advanced users, DRM info shows Google Widevine level 1. And here is CPU-Z where you can check out the clock speeds. You can see we're running the Mali G3 One. This box does have Android version 10 and does not come rooted as standard. And in the Wi-Fi speed test, we achieved download speeds of 53 and upload speeds of 18 megabits per second. And our current top speed in the office is between 50 to 55 megabits per second. And here are the results for the internal disk speeds. We've got read speeds of 128 and write speeds of 48 megabytes per second. So that brings us to our benchmarks, beginning with Geekbench Multiscore of 2070. And this is Geekbench version 4. I could not install the latest version 5. It just was not compatible. And the same story with Anti2 Benchmark. I could not download the latest version. It just would not work. It's not compatible. So I had to download the older version, which was version 6, um, which is proper outdated by now. Um, but I wanted a figure, so I installed it anyway. And end result... 49k so let's see how that compares with the others here is my top android tv box chart for 2021 showing you the latest boxes and seeing how they compare with each other now as you can see the me cool km2 has taken position 19 with a benchmark score of 49k now i know what you're thinking the benchmark results were not reliable as they were older versions than the others but then I did also take into account the specifications. You've got a very similar spec as the Chromecast Google TV. The performance was also very similar. So being close and around the Chromecast Google TV uh, makes me feel like it's a fair result. So there you have it guys, that was the Mi Cool KM2 and here are my pros and cons. So the Mi Cool KM2 is essentially the same specification and performance as the Chromecast with Google TV. But the Chromecast costs £59 and the Mi Cool KM2 costs only £51. It's cheaper and has much better features, so more connectivity, more expansion ports like USB, microSD slot, you have Ethernet, AV and even SBDIF. Chromecast has nothing, no ports at all. Even Miku's remote control is much better in design with more useful buttons and shortcuts. So it looks like Miku has finally achieved their goal, a proper legit certified box giving you 4K streaming across the board, including Netflix people. Now the only thing to mention is the two gigs of RAM and eight gigs of internal storage. Whilst it's on the lower side, it does not affect the performance. I found no issues in general performance. Um, also, the Chromecast device will give you only 4 gigs of internal storage. At least Miikool are giving you double, so you're getting 8 gigs of internal storage. So another reason to choose the Miikool over the Chromecast. So bottom line, for £51, the Miikool KM2 is certainly a great TV box to consider. Now, if you've got any questions, do let me know. Meanwhile, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.